Hey YouTube, this is RoadDoc326 coming at you with another G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra review. Uh, first things first, I just want to say I hope everyone had a safe and happy holidays. But time to get back to work, and I'm happy to start off talking about the Toys R Us exclusive bench press. So here's his box. There's some artwork of his face. It looks pretty burly. He's got a chainsaw in the picture. He looks very much so like a lumberjack, and he kind of reminds me of Sabretooth from X-Men. I don't know if that's just me, or if anyone else catches that resemblance, but that's what I see. Move on to the back. Uh, there's some other pictures of figures in the wave. There's the Snow Serpent, the other Toys R Us exclusive. And onto his file card, which reads, Bench Press is an infantry combat specialist for the G.I. Joe team. A uh, surfer and weightlifter, he easily adapts to sudden shifts in Cobra attack, attacks and quickly forms an aggressive response that keeps the team in control of the field. Oh, um, serial numbers 95913CM53, grade sergeant, preferred weapon 820, selective fire, long range, fully automatic assault rifle. Which, I mean, whose isn't? He doesn't even come with that. Comes with a shotgun and a chainsaw. <laughs> Couldn't be further from a long range weapon. But, here he is. Let's move my camera a little closer. Bench press. Some things to note about his detail is I like this this um, this tattoo on his arm of a, a bandolier. It's blue. I don't think they have any variant black colors or anything. Uh, he does have a nice belt, which does not remove. Uh, not a big deal. And he also, for some reason, has really nice detailing in his hand. I don't know if you can tell, but you can almost see like the bones and the veins that would be in it. So all in all, he looks pretty cool. He does come with his stand, which I always like to show you guys. Does fit very well onto it, not coming off. And I guess we'll just move on to... Oh, but well, let's actually go over his articulation first. Sorry, it's been so long. Uh, he does have pretty good articulation, 360 on the head. Um, he does have one loose joint, and it's his left arm. Not sure if it's every figure that's like this, or just mine, but it's disappointing. It's like they they didn't make like the chest small enough to hold his arm, and therefore it just falls down. Not a huge deal, because other than that he's good. But there's a 360 out and in, elbow. Three six. This is awkward. There's usually a 360 on that wrist, and it usually doesn't fall off. <laughs> Uh, 360 on the mid torso. Uh, legs move forward and back, out and in. Double jointed knees. 360 at the foot and down. So he's got the standard range that all Joes share. Nothing's hindered in any way. As you can see, he's he doesn't wear much. I he, I know he's a repaint of Roadblock. Or er, no, oh jeez, that's embarrassing too. Heavy duty. My bad. Wow, I f I feel awful now. I'm always talking about how I don't like Heavy Duty as much as I like Roadblock, and there I go, saying that he's the same. But, anyway, you can see that it's been a long time. Go on to his accessories. First things first, we'll go over stupid, giant, unnecessarily large missile launcher. Same as Roadblocks, and the same as every other one. Pretty strong spring. That's usually supposed to fall over. Didn't. Little embarrassed. Shut up. <laughs> But the show must go on. He does come with this tomahawk, which he shares with most of the Vipers. I know the Crimson Neo Viper comes with one, and the Desert Viper comes with one. I have reviews of both of them up if you want to see it. But it's a different color. Uh, silver axe part, and then black handle. I think um, the Crimson Vipers was gray, and the Desert Vipers was like brown. This one's black. It fits in both his hands. It doesn't fit that well in either hand, though. Um, you can see it fall, but if you get it right on this base part where it's really fat, he can hold it well. But who holds an axe that far up? But I usually just have him hold it like this. It actually 
it actually looks cool like this. Like, um, like he's not using it, but he's just carrying it that way to look cool in front of all the other lumberjacks. I'll show you it in his other hand, which it fits slightly better in. Uh, his left hand is the, the tighter holding hand. He does come with this very cool flint-esque shotgun. I like it a lot. I love shotguns. And I don't have any figures with one, or at least one that looks so definitively like this. But it fits in his left hand very well, and not so much his right. But it does fit. It fits at like a, that weird off angle, though. Like he'd have to shoot. Like if he was if he was facing forward, he'd, he'd shoot someone to like his his two o'clock. He comes with this backpack, which pegs into his back. I don't like how the peg is so soft, you can see, so it flops around. But I, I do like the two different color scheme on it. I mean, they didn't have to do that. Like, it's not necessary. In fact, it's almost more unnecessary than it is necessary. It This little pouch is just randomly colored black. I like it. It gives it some character. Make it unique. It does peg into his back very well. It's not going to fall off. It's not going to spin or anything pretty nice he also comes with this boonie hat which I mean every person loves a figure that comes with a boonie hat I seem to have trouble fitting it on so what I do and some people I'm sure are gonna kill me for this is I'll tip him upside down into the hat and like press it on and, and that'll get it on perfectly uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that too often because obviously that would make it uh, I, I don't know it just would damage him a little bit and his last accessory but obviously not least is his signature chainsaw now the blade itself is really really soft and really floppy uh, bad and good bad because I mean it's a chainsaw it shouldn't be floppy but good because if you get one that's like a bent it's really simple to just hold it for a couple seconds and it'll actually just reform on its own it's that good but there's some nice detail on it you can see like where the, the fan and motor would be and the gas nozzle two different colors it's got the silver paint and the black paint um, it's hard to hold in his right hand and that's kinda disappointing you can see it's he, he can't hold it in his right hand but he can hold it in his left hand But the problem with that is he he'd have to he'd have to cross around to grab onto this part. And there his look at that. His wrist came off. And that's the second time it's done that in this review. So he must obviously have a fallout wrist. That's that's not good. I'm not happy about that, but I'm not usually rough with these and I don't play with them, so it's not like it's it's gonna be that big of a deal to me. Um so anyway, that's pretty much all you can really say about him. I talked about how his, his chainsaw is not going to fit in his right hand that well, and he'd have to cross over with his, his right hand if he held it in his left. It's kind of lame, but not terrible. Uh, so this is Road Doc 326, and I will see you all later.